Hi everyone, I'm in the observatory and as you can see behind me, there's clouds in the sky. What a surprise. So what I thought I'd do is I'm gonna get the SCAR off the mount here and take it indoors and build it up properly. I've got a new lost mani plate and some bits and pieces. I'm gonna put it all together and build up a permanent rig. So I'm now gonna take it in and crack on with it. So as you expect when you try to do something like this, things never go according to plan. I bought this Lozmandy plate from the Practical Astronomy show, thinking that it would go with the one I'd already got. But unfortunately, the holes in the blocks, they don't line up. So the only way out of it is to buy another one of these. I don't really want to have to drill that bar because I'm going to use this probably now on the other rig, the Esprit in the observatory. So this one, I will get another one of these plates. At least the holes will line up. I can put the second plate on top and bolt it all together and I won't have to drill any holes. So I've now just got to wait for the other Lost Mandy plate to come in. And uh, carry on where I left off. That's astrophotography for you. Nothing goes smoothly in this game. So the one thing I can do, I've actually got an automatic focuser for this rig. I can be fitting this onto the actual scope um, while I'm waiting for the other plate to turn up. So I'm gonna have a go at doing that right now. So I've taken everything out of the box and they kind of provide a couple of Allen keys. So the smaller of the one is to go in here and undo this coarse thumb knob, which is rather tight. Yeah, there she goes. Bit of a snapping sound. So that's off. Now in the box, you get a selection of these flexible adapters. You just have to choose the correct size. So on the one side, all the holes are the same, and on the other side, they're a different size hole. That's a bit too big for that one, so it's gonna be the next one down. I'm guessing it's gonna be this one. That's a nice, nice fit. Now there is a, a flat section to this spindle, which is where you want to locate your little grub screw on the flat section of that spindle. So it's got something to tighten up against. Looks like it's about there. If I push it all the way in, the flat section doesn't go all the way up the spindle flat section finishes about three or four mil away. That's quite close to the edge of the hole, so I'm gonna keep it away a little bit, about there. Just gonna tighten that up. Okay, where do I put the Allen key? Ah, found it. Just make that nice and tight. Right, that's got it. So the EAF fits over the spindle. And then the bracket fits on there like that. So I'm just selecting the right size screws to go through the bracket into the underside of the scope. Just have a little look here. They should just screw in okay. Yeah, that's going in. That's the one. 
So I'm just checking to see how far that goes in. That's good. Okay, it doesn't want to go in there for some reason. It should do, it's the same size by the looks of it. I don't want to cross the thread now, let's go and you've just got to treat it gently, go slowly with it, but it's going in. So, I found out which two holes are the holes for the fixing bracket. It's the first hole and the third hole. This is obviously a screw going down into the body of the scope. So it's the first and the third. And that lines up over there. So, with these little washers. I'll just put the washers on. And then line that up in the hole. So I'm just going to leave this all loose for the moment. Okay, that's loose. So now if I attach that back on there. Okay, so that's attached. Just check everything's tight. So I've had another little delivery, so I should be able to finish building my SGAR rig now. Well, this is four days later. I ordered a new Los Mandy. It's made by Founder Optics, and it's a 13 inch Los Mandy plate. And it now matches the one that I bought from the past show. So I've got two of the same now. So the blocks that I've got will line up with the holes. So I can now continue with this build. You can see I've fitted on the EAF. Okay, so I finally got the Ascar rig all together. This is the final build. Try to make the cables as neat and tidy as I can. Right, so I've got the rig in the observatory here, mounted on the EQ6R Pro. And this is the first time it's been out here since I've built the rig. I've uh, got the EAF fitted, but it hasn't been calibrated yet. I uh, haven't set the backlash, so I'm going to do that now and I'll show you how to do it. Right, so the first thing I've got to do on the focus of draw two here, he's got these numbers. You really want to set it back to zero. So if you go over to the ASIR app and focus the sentence, you've got a section here where it says go to zero. So if I hit go, this is now taking the scope back to zero. Right, we're nearly at zero. Okay. Right, so we're there. It's beeped to let me know that it's at the end point of zero. Okay, so now the focus draw tube is in at zero. I want to find out what its maximum limit is so we'll go over here it's currently set to 60,000 now uh, I have a feeling that would be way too much so if I change this number here I'm gonna suggest 30,000 to start with probably way too much I'll hit the go button Right, this is now going to go out, it'll either stop at 30,000 or it'll stop before then if it hits the maximum limit. It's counting up as well. Yeah. Showing the current position at 6, 9, 7, 7, 2. 
So 30,000 may even be too much. We will find out when it stops. Stop there, let's see. Oh yeah, 16,897. So, if I'm gonna change this max step limit here, I'm gonna change that to, I'm gonna go 16,500. So the maximum step limit is 16,500. Right, so I'm gonna set the backlash. I'm just gonna bring it in from the maximum. Um, maximum I'll make it 15,000. Hit go. It will stop at 15,000, right, so we stopped now. Okay, so I've set the course fast step to 10. This is so I can set the backlash. Okay, so now I'm gonna tap the fast focus button here. Um, every time you tap it, it's going to move 10 steps. And I'm going to see how many times I have to tap it before the focus tube actually moves. So each time I tap it, it's 10 steps. Then you simply count the steps and that is your backlash. So, here we go, this one tap. Uh, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five. Six. It doesn't appear to be moving yet. It's a very small movement anyway, 10 steps, but I've hit it six times. Okay, I think it's moving now. I'm gonna suggest a backlash of 60 there for this scope. I've got it set to 90 on my Esprit 120. But, um, it looks to be about 60. You can do it again. Because I was bringing the uh, focus tube out, now if I hit the button the other way to, to take it in, as, as it last moved out, we'll then see how many times I have to tap it before it starts to move in, and that will be the backlash. So it's another little test to see. So I'm gonna tap it the other direction now, and then you can do this two or three times and take an average if you like. Okay, here we go. So I moved it six times again. It's I'm gonna stick with a backlash of 60. What I was actually doing was touching these buttons here, one to move it out, one to move it in. And I tapped this button here six times before it moved and then I tried it the other way and tapped that button six times. So what I'm going to do now is down the bottom here, I'm going to set the backlash to 60. So the backlash is now set to 60. Um, I'm going to alter the course fast step now back to 30 and uh, fine. I think I'm going to leave it on 5 for now anyway. It will be fine at 5. Okay, so the next step is to open the roof and have a look at some stars, see if we can get focused. see is cloud that is just typical um okay we'll have another look in a minute right so what i've done here is taken a test shot and you can see the stars are clearly out of focus so if i press and hold the focus control here for a little while uh right i'll go try that now I'll take another test shot and look at the size of the stars, see whether they get bigger or smaller. Okay, they look pretty good now. So that's good enough for me to press the autofocus control here and hit start and let it run through an autofocus routine and we'll see what happens. 
So you can see it's creating a nice little V-curve here. Right, well, it says it's focused. Focus position is 12,047. So, okay, test is complete. I've managed to get a shot of the stars, just a couple of quick shots and I've got focused. Uh, that's good enough for me. So I'm now gonna close the roof. Clouds are really coming in thick and fast now, so this really is it for the moment. So that is just how astrophotography goes some nights. It doesn't always work out. The clouds normally come along and spoil things, but at least I was able to get the SCAR on the mount and get it tested. I did get it focused on some stars very briefly, albeit, but um, everything works, which is great news. Um, I look forward to using it. Uh, I did discover a faulty lead, which I will get that fixed. Um, but other than that, it's all good, so. I really hope somebody found this video useful. I hope you liked the video. Uh, I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. Um, I can't believe it, I'm nearly at a thousand now, so that's just fantastic. That's uh, much appreciated. So I'd just like to say thanks again, and as always, I wish you all clear skies.